The three primary doorways that I that I that I talk about most are the, the mouth, the nasal, and the colon. What melatonin does is it allows that that ceiling to be higher. So it allows the cell to have more inflammation, more stress before it makes that shift and before it shuts down its life force. And when methylene blue gets into the mitochondria, it acts as both a pro-oxidant and an antioxidant. So in other words, it sits there and just allows for um, production of energy independent of oxygen, which is a huge deal. Welcome back to the Quick Brain Podcast. I am your host and your brain coach, uh, resident brain coach, Jim Quick. Quick learning, and as always, we help people to learn quickly. The topic we're gonna talk about today is advanced brain rejuvenation. I mean, who doesn't wanna rejuvenate their body and their brain? And we're gonna talk about the latest research-based biohacks to be able to up-level and upgrade your brain. So you definitely want to take a lot of notes. Now, the setting we're in is a little different than we are usual. We're on site here at the Advanced Rejuvenation Center in Sarasota, Florida. I'm here with the founder, Dr. John Lorenz. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, Jim, what a pleasure. This, this has been so, so, so great. And so what we're going to do is, uh, let me just tell you a little bit about John. Dr. John, uh, he's a chiropractic uh, neurologist. He's written a number of books. Uh, make sure you get them uh, if you're interested in this topic. Uh, I have just two of them here, Melatonin, The Miracle Molecule, and uh, Amazing Benefits of Endonasal Cranial Therapy. And uh, this is something that I've had the experience uh, of using to be able to upgrade in my brain. We'll talk a little bit about that. He also is the uh, is scientific uh, director of the uh, Mitosin. Yeah. Uh, which uh, has amazing products uh, yeah. to be able to upgrade your your biology mm -hmm. with it. <laughs> uh, it. If I was to go into it, his CV is very long, so we're not gonna, we're not going to take time. As always, everything's going to be at jimquake.com forward slash notes, uh, including uh, links uh, to his uh, social media, to his clinic, uh, to to his company, and to his books, and so much more. So, Doctor John, yeah, it's a long time coming. Yeah, sure it is. You know, you've helped me uh, a bunch of love late, and I really appreciate that. I. I just had the uh, pleasure to spend a couple of days with you and uh, we're going to do a live talk tonight. Yeah. And I'm really excited about that, all about uh, Brave Force. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. And so I wanted to give people a little bit of a preview here. You have a big toolbox when clients see you and they come from all around the world, you know, or they get brought, what it was, people are at when we're talking about brain specifically. Why don't we take just two minutes and give us you know, a little bit about your story? You know, you're, I think you're a superhero. What, How'd you, you know, you know, we, we were introduced and immediately, I think the first time we got off the phone, I just felt like there was a connection Yeah, you know, where we, we share. And I hadn't, I didn't know a lot about you yeah. when, when you reached out and we were talking and I had shared my story about as a kid, I grew up and I had, um, was placed in special education classes. Yeah. And so I had this history where I was on the Marine base camp Lejeune and people might be familiar with all these, uh, TV shows or these, um, lawyers that are looking for people to sign up for the case because it was one of the largest water contamination not events in U.S. history. So um, I had a lot of dyslexia and learning disabilities and um, I can't help but believe that part of that had to do with, with that, you know, that toxic exposure. Um, and then I had a lot of, you know, traumatic brain injuries growing up. You know, I was a skateboarder and I would slip in my head. And so I found myself like four years behind in school and um, a lot of uh, challenges with behavior and ADHD. So I was placed in special education classes in Hawaii, right? In Hawaii, they don't have like, um, you know, the regular classes, like the special classes. It's like, you know, there's not a lot of in between. You're either like really in the solid special ed classes or you're like, you know, mainstream. So I was surrounded by a lot of kids that really had a lot of problems. And so, you know, four years of that, uh, really changes your perspective on how you see yourself. And I've been really enjoying, you know, your teachings as well with Limitless and really appreciating how much, you know, your mindset and how, what you believe you can do, how much that of an impact that really makes. And so we, we kind of share this, this history of feeling like we have a broken brain growing up and then taking on that challenge, you know, and that pain to purpose story. Yeah, so beautiful. Yeah, you've taken your struggles and not only turned them into strengths, but also it hit them new levels of service for other people. We were introduced by our, our mutual friend, uh, Ben Greenfield. No. He, he uh, refers to you as the, the, the Dr. Strange of a biohacking. 
And I, I love that because uh, our audience knows that I'm a big superhero fan that I recently saw, uh, you know, Dr. Strange, uh, oh, yeah. again, just, uh, get in the spirit of this. And you do a magnificent work here, uh, because you, not only do you have the latest, you know, Western science, but also like in this ancient wisdom and there's a spirit here. So I really, a very great healing environment. I recommend if you're in the area or able to, to see the clinic, definitely be able to do that. Now, when people come here with, with issues of the brain, whether it's focus or it's memory, I mean, you separate from um, long-term uh, challenges or uh, brain aging, uh, memory loss, those kind of brain fog. You have a toolbox here like Dr. Strange does with superpowers. Mm -hmm. What are your go-tos? Well, you know, I, uh, I started having a, an interest in neurology uh, very early on in practice and uh, studied under some of the, what I think some of the greatest, you know, kind of functional neurology um, leaders in chiropractic. Because my initial teaching was about schooling was in chiropractic and then I went on to um, become a naturopath as well. And so um, using principles within functional neurology with a lot of people may not be familiar with, you're able to examine patients in, in, in much greater detail and see what's, what's working, what nerve pools are firing, what areas of the brain are, are needing support and then ways that you can activate them and bring balance to the brain. You know, when you understand what needs to be done, then, then it's almost an art form to start thinking about, well, you know, what could you do to kind of create a neuroplastic change to the brain to bring balance and to allow the brain to function less with less effort, right? So utilizing those principles early on, I was introduced to this technique called endonasal yeah. balloon, right? And so I was given this amazing tool to enhance oxygenation, um, improve cerebral spinal fluid flow, and also to, to open up for neuroplasticity along with using these exercises and using naturopathic medicines. And um, I began to um, develop a, a reputation for being able to treat a number of diseases that really were considered untreatable where people would see like 30 other doctors, um, different movement disorders, um, balance disorders, um, a lot of traumatic brain injuries, TMJ headaches. Okay. Um, and you, you know, again, using the balloons along with a number of different, um, strategies with exercise, brain exercises and nutritional sport diets. Yeah. You know, um, and it is amazing because when you, when you come here, you have so many different tools, diagnostic tools you know, and technologies uh, and systems also to be able to see where somebody is, to be able to take them on a course and build a, a path forward. So the endonasal is, uh, you're, you're inflating, uh, a balloon, then would you call it that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in, inside the nose and it's, now this is not something people want to do at home. And as would stress, just like in all uh, podcasts that we talk about that this is not intended to diagnose or to be able to treat any kind of medical condition that might talk to your, your health practitioner. So endonasal, uh, and then what could some other people do, uh, whether they're here or you support you have from home? Well, I, I think, um, there's a lot of uh, strategies that should really move the needle for people that are looking to enhance their brain capacity. And it all boils down to really one simple, uh, benefit, which is, uh, the mitochondria. This is where the rubber meets the road, where you have oxygen and glucose that basically convert into this ATP, which is the energy currency of the cell and the brain is the most metabolically sensitive organ in the body. So when you have low mitochondrial energy or life force, cellular life force, it shows up in the brain first, then it shows up in the uh, cardiovascular system in the heart second. And so if we can ramp up that life force, if we can improve that, that the body's ability and the mitochondria's ability to make energy, we can have a dramatic change brain. And so. Uh, one of my best suggestions for people is to look at ways that inflammation gets into the body and remove those, mm -hmm. right? So I have something called the, um, a Ganesh protocol, right? So Ganesh is the Hindu elephant, right? He's the, uh, the, the, the Hindu, the Lord of doorways, or sometimes people refer to him as the, um, the remover of obstacles, you know, the doorways in your body are the primary entry points for inflammation in the form of, um, different bacteria, fungus, or viruses that overgrow and they release something called an endotoxin or a lipopolysaccharide. And so these, these compounds enter the body and they're extremely inflammatory. And what they do is they shut down this life force. So literally your mitochondria just 
do not like to operate within a certain level of inflammation. And so there's a shift in the way that our, that our body makes energy. And so by removing sources of inflammation, you could have this drastic ramp up of light force, a chondral output. And then of course, the first place that's going to really show up is the brain. People are yeah. going to feel happier. Their brain, their memory is going to improve their creativity. You know, all the different aspects of, of brain function are, are going to really come back online. Yeah, they went up, up level the, their brain force, if you will. Yeah, which happens to be the name of, well, no, the, of the top that we're going to do later, later this evening. Mm -hmm. This is a special message and invitation for our students. I want to tell you about a revolutionary, unique, powerful, and proven course to be able to upgrade your learning and your life. So not only can you get better grades, but you can do it in a fraction of the time. For only 15 or 20 minutes a day, for 30 days, I guarantee you, you will be equipped with the best tools tactics, resources, and strategies to level up your learning. Go to quickbrain.com forward slash student. Use the code podcast15 and you'll get instant enrollment as a thank you for listening to our show. Um, now when you talk about these doorways, uh, what are the kind of things that are affecting people the most, do you think? When you're looking at the, at the toxins or the things that are creating um, you know, imbalances, or are there big environmental culprits or is the food or is it, I mean, doorways are literally doorways into the body. So you're talking yeah. about like the mouth and the, and the three primary doorways that I, that I, that I talk about most are the, the mouth, the nasal and the colon. Okay. And so when we look at the nasal passage, it's a very underlooked area in medicine. Um, and I think in the, in the population in general, we think about oral hygiene, but then even when we talk about oral hygiene, I don't think that that's being addressed like it should be with most people either, right? Okay. So there's very simple strategies that I've, um, that I've developed for myself that I teach some other patients that we, um, that we share, you know, on a lot of podcasts and so forth, where there's ways to, uh, utilize different nasal sprays. If you're at home, you know, and you wanted to do something that was very affordable, you could get like a colloidal silver, um, nasal spray. Those are fairly inexpensive. We utilize a nasal spray called gl uh, glutasat, which has um, oregano, sage, clove, um, glutathione, NAC, and colloidal silver. So it's a little bit more dynamic. And we use that with a lot of our patients starting out because this overgrowth in the nasal passage is very, very common. Yeah. And I find it very difficult to, to fix a lot of patients that come to see me without addressing this. Yeah, I mean, you, you're right. I never even thought it that way because we hear about oral health and oral, oral care. Right. People are used to brushing their teeth you know, two or two or more times a day or flossing, um, which may not even be enough. Like, you know, we, we've had conversations about, uh, you know, some weird products, uh, the Perker, better oral care, mm -hmm. um, but even people at home, like things like oil pulling. Yeah. Well, I just get some MCT oil, some coconut oil, and, uh, that's a fabulous way. And then putting some essential oils in there can, can help. Uh, oregano is one of my go-tos for an antimicrobial, the, the Boca Zen, um, oil that, that I formulated for mitozen has red thyme, has moringa, ginger oil, clove. It's quite nice. Got fennel as well, but right. it's, it's very pleasant and it's got a kick to it. So it's a bit spicy. Yeah. So when you, when you put it in the mouth, you move it all around the gums and anybody can make their own oil. Like, you know, right. if, if you're looking to do something and you want to really improve your health, Making, doing some oil pulling and using some, uh, some antimicrobial essential oils along with that, um, some sort of an antimicrobial nasal spray. I think the easiest thing for most people to use a colloidal silver can really make a big difference. With the, with the mouth, the oil one, the, the Zenboka, the, I actually keep mine in, in my car. Mm, so yeah. it's just really easy. It's like, and it's refreshing because afterwards it feels, uh, Exactly that. I feel very, very refreshed. Yeah. And because in my car, it's something that it's just a trigger. We talk a lot of in, in the book, in our podcast about habits yeah. and having, uh, you know, having something, you know, trigger another mm -hmm. routine, which mm -hmm. can be, uh, makes, making your health routine a lot easier. The colon can be a little bit more challenging. Uh, the colon is normally holds a lot of bacteria and, uh, there's not supposed to be any bacteria in the small intestine. So all of our flora is really held in the large intestine. When we take antibiotics or if we're eating a lot of non-organic foods, you know, a lot of those pesticides kill our natural bacteria, um, anti-inflammatories and a lot of medicines. 
prescription drugs kill our natural flora. Stress, it has a negative impact on, on our natural flora and our gut in general. Mm -hmm. One of my, my go-to strategies is you know, I learned how to actually make and culture my own yogurt. You know, I started doing that a couple of years ago and we started really working on that um, and, and figuring out some more rare strains. And when you make it yourself, you can ferment it much longer than what they do yeah. commercially because commercially they don't ferment it very long. So the, 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 the bacteria content's very, very poor. Um, so we have a formula that, that we've had some good success with that we call ProBios and, you know, actually I'd be happy to share it with your, with your people. And I, and I prefer something in coconut oil, uh, coconut milk versus cow's milk, you know, dairy. I'm sensitive to dairy. I can't really do it. And I think that, um, overall, I don't think that dairy really works as very good for a lot of people. Like, even if people may not think that they're, they're really sensitive to it, there's, um, you know, there's evidence that, that, that creates some inflammation of the body. And so I, I, I prefer a coconut based yeah. yogurt. Well, I mean, this is great because everybody, everyone's the bio individual, but we'll make sure. Thank you for the recipe. We'll put that uh, on the podcast notes here as well at jimquick.com forward slash notes, um, um, as well as links to, to, to all products and, and everything else. So we talked about the, the gateways and doorways yeah. and that, um, you know, the different inflammate things and cause inflammation and things that can help bring it more to restore mm -hmm. and to bring a balance. I wanted to talk about melatonin because you wrote a whole book on that. Yeah. And this is a topic in the insist underneath says, um, beyond sleep, fight infections, a degenerative uh, neurological disease, depression, autoimmunity, aging, heart disease, and even cancer. And so, um, most people think about melatonin as that supplement that they take to help them to, to go to sleep. Yeah. So you've done a lot of research. You wrote a whole book on this. Well, you know, it, it was something that was interesting to me when I heard Russell writers, he has a presentation that I watched on YouTube and when he started to, you know, break down the research on it. And I had been just coming out of, um, a long battle with Lyme all illness and I had, you know, my brain just wasn't working. You know, this is the second trauma, right? So like we talked about the one as childhood and I had all those trauma. physical trauma, but then there's also, yeah. And, and then I came on the other side of the like 10 years of Lyme disease and like I word finding my memory and I was suffering from a lot of brain issues there. And so, um, I went and did an internship with, um, a very well-known doctor, uh, Frank Schellenberger. And I noticed he was prescribing hundreds of milligrams of melatonin to his patients. And he suggested I start taking a large amount. So I did. And it started to really help my brain. And I noticed my sleep was improved and I had less inflammation in my body. And so I started taking a deeper and deeper dive into it and wound up being so inspired to write this, this book, Melatonin Miracle Law, until I found that melatonin actually works at the core of protecting the cell and the mitochondria for all stress, right? So it's the ultimate resilience molecule. So all stresses have one thing in common where they, they turn into inflammation. There's an inflammatory, uh, aspect of, of the stress, the stressor, like a sunburn, you have inflammation of the skin, right? If you get an infection, you have inflammation. If you have a, a thorn that goes into your skin, right? There's inflammation there. So all stressors create inflammation and the inflammation has a negative impact on your life force, your cellular life force through that mitochondria. So within the cell, all this, every single mitochondria in your body utilize melatonin to buffer that inflammation. But if that inflammation exceeds a certain level that the, that the mitochondria can't adapt to, then it shuts down. What melatonin does is it allows that, that ceiling to be higher. So it allows the cell to have more inflammation, more stress before it makes that shift and before it shuts down its life force. Amazing. We've had experts on talking about melatonin and, you know, and there's some information out there that uh, they present information saying, yeah, uh, be cautious of melatonin. Mm -hmm. And so uh, what's, what's that about? Well, I, there's a lot of mis uh, misinformation out there and some very smart individuals out there that are misinformed. Some of the things that you'll hear are that there's a negative feedback with melatonin or all hormones. And that's not true. Melatonin is one of, one of the only hormones I know that really has no negative. In other words, if you take it, you're not going to stop producing your own, your own melatonin. So your melatonin is produced based on sunlight into your eyes, right? So that sun, 
when you're out in the, in the sun during the day, um, is going to trigger you to store melatonin. And then when you go into darkness and your, your pineal releases that melatonin and that puts you to sleep. So you could take large amounts of melatonin for a long period of time. And then the very next day, not take melatonin your pineal is going to produce just as much as it would if you've never taken any. So that's the big, that's the big argument. The other argument that you'll hear is that there's a toxic level to it, right? That somehow it's toxic. And there's never been a study that's shown that melatonin has been taught. In fact, the word toxic and melatonin should never be used in the same sentence. It's good to know. The last one I want to talk about is something that I started integrating uh, more recently because of you. And that is uh, for specifically for cognitive performance, methylene blue. Oh, yeah. Tell me about how that, what, what's the mechanism there and, and how is it, why do people um, get such amazing results? And maybe you could talk about some of those results. Well, methylene blue has this long history. It's a salt, right? And mm -hmm. it was first developed in the 1800s. It was the first cure for malaria, right? Okay. And it's a, it's a dye. So they were actually dyeing the malaria at, so that they could observe like what they could introduce into the medium that would kill it. And as soon as they introduced the dye, they're like, then they've got their cure. Right? Right. So then methylene blue became the um, standard of cure for malaria. And then they found out that it worked as an antimicrobial on a lot of different uh, infections. That's not the reason people are taking it. It's funny because you and I go and, and speak at the same, some of the same health, wellness, uh, biohacking conferences. Yeah. And you'll see some people walking around when you're talking to them, their tongue will be blue. Right. But what are, what, what are, what are people taking? Well, well so they, the, it has an affinity for the mitochondria. Okay. Right. And that's what makes it great to stain like the brain, right? Because you can see nerve cells like light up. So the more mitochondria cell has, the more methylene blue is going to be drawn to it. And when methylene blue gets into the mitochondria, it acts as both a pro-oxidant and an antioxidant. So in other words, it sits there and just allows for um, production of energy independent of oxygen, which is a huge deal. Yeah. Overall, you get about 30% of a boost in your ability to make energy through your mitochondria, which is significant. So people might notice when they take methylene blue that their, their workouts are stronger. They're happier. In fact, they did large human trials with methylene blue and depression and the results were phenomenal. So there's a mood uplifting aspect to methylene blue, endurance, stamina, um, brain power, memory, memory consolidation. So like they did studies with phobia. And they found that they could um, expose people to certain things that they were having phobias for. And if they gave one dose of methylene blue after the therapy, that it activated memory consolidation so that therapeutic outcome was dramatically improved wow. just with one dose of methylene blue. Wow. And is this something you recommend people, what's the protocol usually for, for somebody? Well, I, I use the, the methylene blue, um, the Lumitol blue, right? So the Lumitol blue, by the way, on social media, if you use the word methylene blue, they'll censor you because somehow I think there's certain powers that be that don't want to see that nutrient, you know, okay. circulating too much. So just so you know, um, Lumitol blue, we made it in a, in a small bar and it, it's very absorbable orally. And uh, we'll usually recommend people start with 40 to 80 milligrams. Therapeutic windows anywhere from a half a milligram to four milligrams per kilogram of body weight. And that can be taken every day. I recommend maybe every two or three weeks that you take a couple of days off. But generally it's safe. They've, been, they've done studies where people have taken high doses for, for years and they haven't seen any, uh, any problems. And one thing that's really interesting with methylene blue is it's photodynamic. So when you do things like red light, you know, like our friend with sauna space, you know, we're really, we're big fans of the, um, of the sauna space because those lamps really penetrate a lot uh, deeper than like the, the, the led panels that a lot of people are using. Um, and then the sunlight, of course, getting out of the sun is going to be your absolute best. So taking the methylene, getting some sun really enhances this whole effect that we're talking about. I love it. Dr. John, this is a lot of information, uh, you have, you've introduced a lot of new tools. Where can people find out more? So you can find me on Instagram at your out of box doc. You're and then, box doc. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, the clinic is advanced rejuvenation.us. Fantastic. And we'll put all the links again uh, to Dr. John's books, uh, to, uh, to his clinic, uh, to uh, MitoZen. And uh, thank you so much, buddy. Yeah. Oh, my buddy, Jim. Thank you everybody for watching and make sure you subscribe on YouTube. 
on uh, Spotify, iTunes, wherever you consume uh, Pandora. And uh, the highest uh, compliment you give us is, uh, is a review. So we appreciate your, your time for watching. Uh, we try to keep this sponsor free to make it available to the world so you don't have to pay anything. You just have to pay attention. So thank you for watching and uh, listening. And we'll see you soon.